Hello and welcome to The Drum, I'm Steve Kinane. Coming up, cattlemen finally get compensation, but not from the MLA. New York approves gay marriage, could Australia follow? And what chance the tobacco industry could win its legal case against the federal government? Our panel tonight, former Liberal advisor and social media consultant Tommy Chudhope, author and blogger Anthony Lowenstein, and in Canberra, ABC social media reporter Latika Burke. Well, it seems that Australians are losing interest in taking action on carbon pollution. The Lowy Institute's annual survey asked around 1,000 people for their opinions on a range of topics, including climate change. The poll found just 41% believe urgent action is needed, down five points from last year, down 27 points from five years ago. We've seen the failure of the Copenhagen climate change talks. We've seen significant questioning of the science behind climate change. And, uh, and I think we've seen uh, the domestic political divide in terms of action on climate change become much sharper and much more divisive. And so I think all of that has led to a steady slide in public uh, support for taking action on this issue. The poll was taken in March this year. Now, Latika, this is a huge shift in opinion. 41% of Australians now think addressing climate change is a serious and pressing issue. 27 points down five, from five years ago. It's a huge shift. Yeah, and it correlates with every other poll that's come out in probably the last 12 to 18 months that really does show that the government's uh, actions or fight to address climate change are going to be made that bit harder because between 2007, when you could say that support for climate change and, uh, importantly, paying for climate change at the personal level was at its peak. Now, of course, we know what happened to Kevin Rudd. He squandered that opportunity. He failed to go to a double dissolution election, which might have seen his emissions trading scheme through. So now that uh, Labor is trying round two on an emissions trading scheme, its fight is uh, all that much harder and much of it because of its own doing. Tommy, what do you point that 27, um, put that 27 point swing down to in, in the five year period? Yeah, I think Latika made a fair point there. I think, you know, 2006, 2007, we had Kyoto, we had Inconvenient Truth, we had Al Gore trumping his myths as well. Uh, but since then, you know, Kevin Rudd's really squandered the first opportunity uh, with his ETS or CPRS. But Labor's message is really the core problem here. They're still barking on about, you know, saving the environment, save the planet. They need to prosecute an economic message for having a carbon tax. And it's la that lack of clear narrative that's really undermined that message. And I'm not surprised at all that this had a significant drop. I think also you probably have to factor in there the very effective campaign that Tony Abbott has undertaken in the last 12 months. I think that has would partly attribute to these low sort of figures. And your thoughts on this? I think one of the things that um, comes out is that the Labor Party has been so incompetent at selling the message. I mean, yes, I think I agree with Tommy that the Labor, that Abbott's um, Liberal Party has run a campaign which essentially says climate change might be real, yes, but the way we're going to prosecute is going to be very, very different. The problem, I think, also is that many people who advocate and support doing something on climate change, as I do, have actually not been tolerant enough about dissent, about that discussion. So you have to... A debate requires a debate. It doesn't require simply saying to someone, my view is right and yours is wrong. I'm not saying there are two equal sides. I think climate change is real and the science shows that unequivocally. But ultimately there needs to be a debate by people actually who can prosecute an argument. Gillard cannot sell anything including her own house. I mean, clearly, she's in a position where anything she says... A few days ago on AM, she was talking about the year since Rudd was assassinated. All she said was, I, I, you know, I'm pro prosecuting a reform agenda 15 times. That's not a... It says nothing to anyone about anything. So... So, so could this all change once they get the details out? They hope so. I mean, maybe. I mean, certainly, it will, at least they can argue what, how, you know, how much people are going to have to pay for electricity and everything. And most people are struggling out there to pay for... All, their lives. That's what people care about ultimately. And the people who worry about, like me, living in a city, actually see it very differently. I think there's, there's been a lot less dissent and toleration of different views about this than there should be from my side, so to speak. So you think be. calling people deniers and sceptics has hampered the pro-carbon tax? I think there are a lot of people who have prosecuted the argument to support climate change who have yeah. not been open enough to debate. I mean, whether you use the word denier, sceptic, I think comparing people to Holocaust deniers, as some people have, is just absurd and also offensive, frankly. Steve, I would also add there that I think a lot of this is to do with carbon tax fatigue or carbon price fatigue, climate mm. change fatigue, whatever you want to call it, because we've been discussing this issue for now about four to five years and quite intensely 
this issue has dominated politics, whether it be uh, the policy aspect or the political aspect in claiming leaders like Malcolm Turnbull and Kevin Rudd, this has been really at the forefront of the debate. And it would come as no surprise to people that, you know, maybe three years ago, uh, tabloid and commercial news outlets were saying... No more climate change stories. We don't think the audience is listening. And uh, I wonder now if they're still listening. Well, another part of that Lowy Institute report was that three quarters of Australians felt the federal government had done a poor job of addressing the climate change issue. Both major parties have continued selling their competing tax cuts and carbon compensation plans. The Prime Minister is promising what she calls a battler's buffer to ensure the poorest Australians are more than compensated for any cost of living rises. We will be working with Australians, nine out of ten households, getting a tax cut or a payment increase, millions not paying a cent, and for the lower income households, we'll make sure that there's a safety net there, a buffer, so that they're actually getting 20% more than the expected impact on them of a price on carbon, because we realise they're the Australians with the absolutely tightest budgets and the least room for manoeuvre. The Treasurer has questioned how the opposition will pay for its promised tax cuts, offering to let Treasury help them out with the costings. We will make the Treasury available to Mr Hockey and to Mr Abbott to cost their policies so all Australians can understand how accurate Mr Abbott's statements are. But Tony Abbott has rejected Wayne Swan's offer, sticking to his promise of tax cuts without a carbon tax. The government keeps peddling this lie that the rest of the world is on the verge of introducing carbon taxes and emissions trading scheme, uh, that we've got to do this we'll urgently. We'll miss the boat. We'll miss the boat. We've got to do this urgently uh, or we're going to be left behind. Well, absolute nonsense on stilts. That's what it is. It is absolute nonsense on stilts. It's deliberate deception from a government which uh, couldn't lie straight in bed, to be honest. Tommy, uh, oppositions always complain they don't have the same resources as governments. Why isn't the Coalition taking this offer up from Wayne Swan or, or oh, Julie Gillard? I think politically, uh, Tony Abbott doesn't want any spend any minute or any hour of any day talking about uh, the Coalition's policy when the government is so hampered and so hamstrung talking about their own policy. Uh, I think it's an easy political fix for him to say, thanks but no thanks, uh, I'd rather talk about the carbon tax, and I think that's probably the political motivation behind it, but... Uh, as I understand, I think this is probably a longer piece of policy announcement for Tony Abbott, a series of tax announcements at least, and I think, uh, you know, policies are normally costed in an election time frame, not in between. I, I've never, I've never, I don't recall any Labor Party policy being costed in between elections. Anthony, fair enough, two years out that 